definitely a big part of my, you know, journey in life was just making sure that I'm, I'm living in reality and, and I'm using what I've been given to do good. You know, for me, I try to look for projects that amplify truth, beauty, and goodness. It's a big part of like all the things that I look for, whether I'm an actor in front of the camera or I'm producing or directing. Um, yeah. That's a big part of, of what I do. I just directed this film called Monster Summer, which is um, something that's meant for the broader culture. It's it's uh, uh, just about, I feel like families are underserved right now when it comes to content that's just meaningful and that um, is worry-free. You're not going to have an awkward conversation on the ride home. You don't have to, you know, cover your kid's eyes. Um, there, there used to be a lot of content like that, and there's not a lot of that anymore. So I'm driven to really try to make both as an actor and as a, a director stuff that can amplify truth, beauty, and goodness. Are you looking for a comfortable brown scapular that won't break? Check out our sponsor, scapulars.com. They use American-made paracord, so it's super strong. And they also use Australian merino wool, so it's super comfortable. It feels like you're getting a warm hug from your heavenly mother. Click on the link above or below in the description and get yourself the most durable, comfortable scapulars in the world. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to A Reason for Hope podcast. It is I, Alanis, here. Um, So excited for this episode. I hope you guys are all having a super blessed day wherever you're listening at. If you're not, I hope that after this episode, it'll be super blessed. I know that I'm incredibly blessed to have today's guest. We're joined by David Henry. He's in the Array of Hope studio. Welcome, David. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. If You guys aren't familiar with the name. I'm sure you are. Maybe you need to just like connect the face with the name David Henry. Uh, This is usually the part where I give a little synopsis of his life, a little bit about what he does. Very fun for you, I'm sure. I'm sure it could be a little awkward. Are you a words of affirmation guy or? I mean, I'm good with words of affirmation. Love a word of affirmation. Yeah, good. Okay, great. So David is an actor, a producer, a director. He is a father of three. Is that true? Yes. Love to hear it. Appearance at some point. Oh, good. We love it. Not not a planned appearance, but they might make an appearance. (laughs) We'll be blessed by their appearance. Um, He's a husband and above all, a child of the Lord. And so we're just really excited to have you on and dive into some of your passion projects, some of the things that you've been working on recently. And ultimately, I would love to get just like a glimpse of just like the humanity behind David. Um, I think it's easy for us to see celebrities and forget like, hey, this person's a human and again, a child of the Lord. And so just pick your brain on all of these things. We've got a lot to dive into, not the most amount of time. So let's just jump in. Sounds so good. right off the bat, something I wanted to ask you about, and I think this is something so many people are curious about. You grew up in the limelight. You grew up in front of a camera, right? Child star, child actor. And we hear all of the time of people falling off the rails. Uh, just wanting to hear about what your experience was like in all of that, especially in a man who, you know, is very firm in his faith. Was that something that you were clinging on to throughout it? Was that something that helped you stay on the rails? Or did you have kind of a reversion back to the Lord? Yeah, the latter. Um, mm. I think I got to experience the fruitlessness of, just living for material ends or material goods or pleasure. And that led to kind of a deeper yearning and search. Um, yeah, that, that, that was really a big a part of it was kind of going in the wrong direction to yeah. the right one. <laughs> yeah. Which honestly isn't like far off from the human experience. I think many people go through those struggles. The difference though, is that you were in the limelight and you're in the public eye when you're facing all of that, which I'm sure kind of compounds onto it. But ultimately, I feel like our culture is just struggling with identity issues and wounds and not knowing who or whose we are. That's like so prominent in our world today. Um, Was that something that you felt like you had to navigate through, like putting your identity in what you do and what you're good at and forgetting like, I'm not just an actor? Yeah, yeah, a a big, um, definitely a big, Part of my, you know, journey in life was just making sure that I'm, 
I'm living in reality and, and I'm using what I've been given to do good. You know, for me, I try to look for projects that amplify truth, beauty, and goodness. It's a big part of like all the things that I look for, whether I'm an actor in front of the camera or I'm producing or directing. Um, yeah. That's a big part of, of what I do. I just directed this film called Monster Summer, which is um, something that's meant for the broader culture. It's, it's uh, uh, just about, I feel like families are underserved right now when it comes to content that's just meaningful and that um, is worry-free. You're not going to have an awkward conversation on the ride home. You don't have to, you know, cover your kid's eyes. Um, there, there used to be a lot of content like that, and there's not a lot of that anymore. So I'm driven to really try to make both as an actor and as a, a director stuff that can amplify truth, beauty, and goodness. So this this film that I did, Monster Summer, which comes out October 4th, is um, has a lot of those values baked into it. it. It has Mel Gibson. It has Lorraine Bracco, Kevin James, Mason Thames. It's a story about a group of kids teaming up with an aging detective to hunt a foe that moved on their island that's starting to um, make children go missing in different ways. So it's like, if you think Goonies, if you think E.T., if you think Stranger Things, it's very similar to all of those films tonally, or even yeah. Monster Squad, very similar to all of those those films tonally, um, but is meant for just a worry-free, fun family experience this Halloween season. Um, and it comes out October 4th. So I'm, I'm really wanting everyone to go see that because I think it'll yeah. be um, just a worry-free, fun time um, in the Halloween season. But uh, yeah, a lot of the things that I look for amplify those qualities as well as the Reagan film that I'm that I'm acting in coming out uh, on August 30th. So good. Yeah, that actually bleeds into my next question. I think you kind of did touch on it. Um, I love that you don't pigeonhole yourself, first of all. The fact that you have so many different films and shows that are so... Um, just different varieties like Monster Summer and Reagan. It's it's much a more mature film. And then the other ones are geared toward uh, a younger audience. How does the discerning process go? I know you said you like to highlight or amplify truth, good and truth, be, truth, truth beauty and goodness. And goodness. Yeah. yeah. What is that called? The, uh, the transcendentals. transcendentals. Yes, I love it. Um, is there like a deeper discernment process when it comes to being asked to be on a film where you have to like process with the Lord if this is something that he wants you to do? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's easier than you'd think. It's like, can I do it or not? And, <laughs> and it's clear with the material. And is it going to amplify those values, the transcendental qualities that I'm looking yeah. for or not? And it, it actually, it does become pretty simple because things are really clear. It's like, okay, the, you know, page two, well, that scene is not, help going to do any of that. So nope, not doing that. Yeah. Um, or, you know, this project does have a lot of good that it can do. And I'm excited sure. to get behind that and lend my platform to it and um, help amplify that project. Dude, can I just say that like points to your heart? Because I think for a lot of people, it's not that simple. I think they would have like a really huge um, struggle figuring out like if the Lord, I mean, you hear we can glorify the Lord through so many different things. I mean, in scripture it says, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you drink, just glorify God, like do it for the glory of the Lord. And sometimes people think, well, I'm I'm using my platform for good and I'm glorifying God and I'm like his vessel here on set. Even if this um, portrayal isn't necessarily a glorification of God, at least I'm like his light on the set. And sometimes that's not always the case, but I really do commend you for uh, for just seeing it as black and white. That's, I'm sure, not super easy for most people. So just kudos I appreciate to you. It. If, uh, if, I, if I was obsessed with, you know, ulterior motives, making money or whatever, then I would become a banker. But uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's simpler in my mind. It's like, you know, you can do it or not. And uh, if right. you can, go big. Magnificat has changed the daily prayer life of millions of Catholics worldwide. Each monthly pocket-sized issue includes prayers for morning and evening, daily mass prayers and readings, meditations, saints' lives, essays, and more. Magnificat helps you pray the way the church prays. Email offers at Magnificat.com to request a free copy. Visit Magnificat online by clicking the link above or below in the description or download the app and receive a month for free. Explore Magnificat and give your prayer life the beauty it deserves. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
And you do seem like you are in a place where you're stable in your faith. I'm sure a lot of maturity has come from being a father and raising your kids up to know and love the Lord. Um, so especially with this film, Reagan, do you feel like what, there was anything um, like spiritually beneficial for you or anything that like challenged you in your faith or helped you grow in your faith when you're portraying such a prominent figure who um, I believe like he did love the Lord. I mean, yeah, no, per- per- faith and purpose were a big part of his life. And that stemmed from his childhood. Mm-hmm. His um, mother was a big proponent of that. And uh, it, it carried on through the rest of his life. I mean, one of the things I find inspiring about him was that he never shortchanged God. I think a lot of times um, Catholics can uh, just dream very small or very safe and just want to escape away from the problems of the world and bury their head in the ground and, you know, um, put their talents under the, under, um, under a basket and not, not let it shine. And um, Reagan was, was, that, that, you know, to me, that mentality kind of um, limits magnificence. And I think God wants us all to be, to, to exemplify that virtue in our own ways. That doesn't mean everyone's going to become president. It might mean no one will ever notice you. You're just, you can just be a nun in a corner somewhere that no one will ever notice, but, but that nun's being magnificent in her, in her corner, um, making an impact on the world. So I think we're all called to do that in, in our, in our little ways. And um, Reagan was a great example of that. He, was someone that defied all the odds. He should have never been president. Uh, just mm-hmm. from a, you know, grew up in a small town and was a lifeguard and then a, a sports broadcaster and the news and current events on the radio and then was an actor and then was broke and then was a, in a Screen Actors Guild. Like, none of it made sense. And then he was doing random commercials. Like, how is this guy going to be president? This, none of it makes any sense, but he always knew he had purpose and he always had faith that God would use that for something important yeah. um, and to make an impact. And um, he always dreamt big with that. Next thing you know, he's president of Screen Actors Guild and the governor of California and then president. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I find that very inspiring. I'm so curious what the set dynamic looked like. You were alongside some giants in the acting world and I can say the same for them, being alongside you. Um but it seemed like a lot of them are, you know, also walking with the Lord. I know that Dennis Quaid is a Christian. So uh, were, did you find that there were like any theological conversations or anything of that sort that you guys were chatting about? It was, you know, when you're on set, it's very busy. So you're sure. you're on a very tight schedule and there's, you know, 300 people that are all trying to be there for that one specific minute or two minutes that you're recording and then stop and then go again. So it's very high pace and a lot of pressure. So there wasn't, you know, the only downtime I've had with Dennis has been at events or premiere, the premiere or anything like that. Um, our other conversations were, you know, largely professional because it's my job to really hand the baton to him. I play a younger version of Reagan. He plays an older version. And um, I wanted to make sure that I handed it off to him in a, in a very seamless way because he is carrying the majority of the film. Um, so I wanted to learn how he was playing Reagan and what his process was so that way I could really help tee him up properly. Absolutely. That makes sense. You guys weren't even on screen together because that would be no, no, yeah. very meta. That would be very, really weird. It would be very strange yeah, unless, unless it's a time like travel movie. The mirror, a younger version of himself. Oh, a I would love that scene. That sounds kind of yeah. epic. <laughs> so cool. Well, David, I wanted to give you just an opportunity to share about those projects, um, where when we can watch them, where we can watch them, when they release all of this, all of this stuff. Yes. So Reagan comes out August 30th in theaters everywhere. So please go, go check that out. There's some wonderful tie-ins with John Paul II in the film as well that I think you'll find meaningful, um, especially the war against communism. And um, Monster Summer comes out October 4th. And that is, again, a, a, a fun family, spooky adventure for the Halloween season, like The Goonies or Stranger Things. That's just a worry-free, fun time. Um, so check out both of those. I'd really appreciate it. And um, thank you. So good. All right. Well, I know you're short on time, so I just want to hit you with a few rapid fire questions. So how are you feeling about it? You ready? I'm excited for some rapid fire. Awesome. Let's do it. So question number one, do you have any advice to the Christian who is struggling with vanity or pride, but really has a desire to be in front of the camera? Yes. Picture yourself at your most successful. So take a moment, picture yourself at your most successful. You have everything that you want as an actor. It's all there. Everything you could possibly imagine. It's there. Now remove fame and money. And are you still happy? So you're not famous. You don't have any money doing what you're doing. 
And are you still happy and find it fulfilling and meaningful? That'll tell you if you're doing it for the right reasons. That's so good. Question number two, what is a daily prayer that you never skip? Um, the rosary, my morning offering, um, nighttime prayers. Nice. Try to get to mass every day if I can with my family. Um, yeah, those are all really important to me. Good, good, glorious. Question number three, what is a Christian virtue that you think Reagan embodied? Magnificence. Magnificence. Mm. Um, he, he, he truly uh, didn't shortchange God, and he lived in a magnificent way. I mean, there's, that's, there's only one way to put it, and that's, that's not an easy thing to do. And final question, if you could play any saint in a movie about their life, what saint would you pick? Oof. Um, you know, I'm Italian, so I'd love to play Padre Pio. I'm not old enough yet, but I would love to play. That, that would be that would be unreal. But um, that's a great question. I feel like I want to get back to you on that one. <laughs> Do you know who I can see you playing? Who? A peer Giorgio Frasati. I've gotten that a bunch of times. I've really? A bunch of times, yeah. Maybe it's the Lord. Maybe, maybe it's meant to be. Maybe it's meant to be. Your next film, maybe. There we so go. Good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, David. And thanks for spending some time with us here on the podcast. For everyone listening, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed every bit of this episode and we'll catch you on the next one. God bless. God bless you guys. Thank you all. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of A Reason for Hope podcast. If you haven't already done so, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.